10 times Meghan Markle pissed off the royal family. Lack of clothing articles. For her first appearance in public as the Duchess, Meghan Markle chose a new dress from GOAT and a hat from Philly Tracy that matched the dress. It all seemed okay until the press and internet users noticed that she didn't wear a bra. The unwritten rule says that the woman of the royals can't appear at official events without wearing this piece of underwear. But the Duchess has made her own opinion about that. She's convinced that an elegant style can and should be combined with her own personal comfort. But wait, it doesn't stop there. Pantyhose are a must-have element in the wardrobe of the royal family members when they appear in public. The late Queen Elizabeth II requires the royal family to always follow this rule, no matter what the weather is. But Meghan Markle has appeared in public several times, not only ignoring this rule, but also wearing open-toed shoes, which are another taboo, according to the royal etiquette. Final thing, I promise. During a visit to Australia in October 2010, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex visited the famous Sydney Bondi Beach, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle took off their shoes and walked on the beautiful sand barefoot, which is direct contradiction of royal etiquette. This prohibitation works mostly for women, and Kate Middleton, unlike the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, follow this rule. During her visit to Australia in 2014, the wife of Prince William walked on the beach wearing her shoes. Yes, these three incidents were taboo, but who really cares? Black outfits. In the royal family, black colors are used during morning events. More than that, every time a member of the royal travels somewhere, they pack a set of black clothes in order to be able to return home wearing the clothes, in case the monarch passes. This unwritten tradition has been followed since 1952, when the late Queen Elizabeth was visiting Kenya and her father passed away. The princess didn't have black clothes with her and she wouldn't leave the plane until a morning dress was delivered to her. Meghan Markle regularly wears black clothes at official events. She even visited the 2018 British Fashion Awards with black nail polish, which is another violation of the royal etiquette that allows women to have nude or pink nails only. Do you think that when this couple breaks the royal rules, they show disrespect towards other monarchs? Or is it just an attempt to be closer to ordinary people and a good tendency in general? Informal happy B-Day. The words of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle seem to be informal to many. They didn't just leave a comment under George's photo that was published on the official Instagram page of Kensington Palace, and they were supposed to make a separate post on their own Instagram page, but they also forgot to mention the full title of the future king. Even in this informal congratulations message, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were supposed to call him His Royal Highness. Relax media and royal experts, I'm sure they FaceTimed him, got him a gift, and the whole shebang. I personally am so tired of these royal protocols. They're people, just let them be people. Protocols. Speaking of these stupid protocols, she apparently breaks them all the time. According to the royal protocol, the members of the royal family whose origin or status is lower are supposed to stay behind. Meghan Markle has been ahead of Prince Harry many times during public events. Also, even though this thing is not a big violation of the protocol, the members of the royal family don't do that. Etiquette expert William Hansen pointed out that this is not protocol breach and said, usually if you're a member of the royal family or a dignitary, you have a member of the staff to open and close the car door for you, but her old habits show how shy Markle still is. Harry's trip to T.O. Even before Prince Harry proposed to Markle, he visited her in Toronto where the actress was in the middle of shooting a film. But this actually contradicts the official policy of the royal family that states that its member should not confine official visits with their personal affairs. After his Caribbean tour, Prince Harry was supposed to go back to London where he had some public events planned. But he went to see Meghan instead. Blah, 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 personal business affair. This is, who cares? He wanted to see her. He is absolutely loaded, so he flew and saw her. Stay pissed off, Royals. Might as well add this stupid reason too, hugs. Of course, kisses and public are frowned upon in the royal family, but the Duke and Duchess don't think that there is anything wrong with it. They regularly hold hands and hug each other, and after the win in the charity polo event, Prince Harry kissed Meghan Markle passionately. However, these gestures during sporting events are not a rare thing. Princess Diana also kissed King Charles after these matches, so who cares? No name tag. The annual royal race in Ascot has very strict dress code requirements. The female visitors of this prestigious event have to choose dresses with closed shoulders that are at least of knee length. 
They're also supposed to wear elegant hats and special branded name tags with their names. But during the 2018 race, Meghan Markle ignored the requirement for her name tag. Unlike other guests, the Duchess of Sussex didn't put her badge on her dress, but kept it in hand instead. By the way, the only member of the royal family that doesn't have to wear a name tag was the late Queen Elizabeth. You do you, Meg. Screw the haters. People know who you are. Why do you have to wear a name tag? Wedding fight. Meghan fought with Kate while planning her wedding. It sounds crazy, but things like that can snowball if you let them. And monarchical clans aren't exactly known for letting bygones be bygones. However, a new theory claims that Meghan's clash with the royals may have begun with something even more petty. Royal biographer Lady Colin Campbell has a release entitled Meghan and Harry The Real Story. In the book, Campbell claims that on Meghan's wedding day, everything was hunky-dory between the bride and her new in-laws. A few days later, however, Meghan committed some sort of colossal faux pas at a party celebrating King Charles' humanitarian work. I knew the tremendous amount of hope the royal family invested in Meghan being a success. Campbell told the Daily Star in a new interview promoting her book, hundreds of millions of people of color are rooting for Meghan. I was rooting for Meghan being a Jamaican. I was emotionally invested in Meghan's success. She added, virtually everyone I know, including my royal friends and wider aristocracy, wanted Meghan to be a success. Campbell continued, but it quickly became apparent the ride may not be as smooth as everyone had hoped it would be. And it would not be as quite positive as everyone had hoped it would be. According to Campbell, the party appeared to be going smoothly until Meghan somehow astonished a guest with impeccable palace connections. And what exactly did Duchess say or do? Well, sadly, Lady Collins is keeping mum for now. I can't repeat it exactly, it's in the book, but what I can say, something happened at the very first garden party at Buckingham Palace. She said, basically ego's fault. I'll sum it up like that real quick for you. Political, protocol says no politics. Weird considering your voices are heard the most. Does this actually mean we just want to be popular and look important and avoid giving our input on major issues? Because that's what I hear. William is doing bits and making a difference even from his political views. But when Megan does it, the media goes crazy. Sounds fair. On the royal couple's website, Archwell, a picture is posted with Meghan Markle showing off her voting sticker to urge Americans to vote on midterm election day in November 2022. The royal family members are supposed to be neutral in elections. Oh well. Likes her fans. I'm giving up here. The royals commonly keep their distance when arriving and departing events, but Meghan offers fans hugs, which is not common among Americans, holds conversations, and even signs autograph books. However, she doesn't sign her name as a precaution to make sure no way copies and forges royalties names. Oh my God, what an evil girl trying to be nice. Baby shower. Baby showers are not standard in Britain, but Meghan planned one in the US before the birth of Archie. Some of the celebrities in attendance were Amal Clooney, Abigail Spencer, Gail King, and possibly but it's never been confirmed, Serena Williams and Priyanka Chopra. Meghan disregarded the hate. A clip of Meghan Markle's kind-hearted act for one of her biggest fans during a March 2016 taping of the Build series in New York City was going viral for a while, and this kind of highlights the fact that she does so many kind things for her fans. With many lauding the former suit actress for her apparently caring nature, the nearly six-year-old interview began receiving renewing attention when a user named Michelle shared a 54-second clip of Markle's appearance on Twitter. While discussing social media with host Donna Friedkin, which Markle said she views as a great way to connect with people, she calls out a fan of hers in the audience named Emily Sorrells, who was in high school at the time. I only know Emily through Twitter, and I know she was coming because I saw it on social media. Markle explains to the host she's going on a trip soon to Costa Rica to do some aid work because she said that my UN stuff inspired her. I wrote you a letter. I brought it, Markle says, holding up a small parcel. As the young fan looks out in utter disbelief, the star then walks into the audience to give Emily the letter and the two share an embrace. Now I understand royals aren't meant to hug or give autographs to fans, but I do believe that Megan's outlook at this and her bravery to kind of stand out from that protocol, go meet fans, talk, connect, is huge and it's something that William and Harry also possess. 
Now this may be taboo in the royal world, but I think that it gives us a closer connection with Meghan, someone who doesn't necessarily get the best bias from the media. Baby shower. Meghan Markle shared never before seen photos of her star studded baby shower in New York City in a new episode of Harry and Meghan. Meghan Markle's shower, which was held at the Mark Hotel in February 2019 prior to the arrival of her first child, Archie, featured a bouquet making station, games, and more. In other photos, the A-list group, which included Serena Williams, placed their hands on Meghan's baby bump and gathered on the couch for a photo. However, the Suits alum faced severe criticism for the lavish affair, with insiders telling Page Six at the time that the palace despised the ordeal. This is a clear sign that Meghan thinks that being a royal duchess is about celebrity, not royalty, Patrick Jefferson said. Diana's longtime private secretary said this of the reported $500,000 baby shower. Now, I don't agree, she's just having fun. Royal biographer Ingrid Seward described the 2019 affair as trashy with its starry guest list and swanky location. Now, Meghan is using her Netflix docuseries to defend the event. My girlfriend surprised me with a really beautiful baby shower in New York. They're like, we're gonna shower you with love, we're gonna shower her baby, we're gonna get through this. The actress explained that she didn't understand the backlash because her friends had thrown the affair with their own money. These strong, successful, independent women chose to use their own money, and it's not taxpayer money, to throw a party for their friend from a place of love. Megan explained, why are you taking such a beautiful moment and trying to ruin it? Megan, I back you on all of those statements, I agree. Your friends threw you a baby shower. Why are they trying to ruin it? Why are they trying to ruin it? Go have fun, go enjoy your life. Spoke at length about the media's present role in his family life, starting with footage taken outside the hospital following his birth. Of the ongoing attention brought throughout his childhood, he said, the majority of my memories are being swamped by paparazzi. He recalled learning as a young child how to handle the attention, saying within the family, within the system, the advice that's always given is don't react, don't feed into it. Thanks for watching you Meghan Markle haters.